welcome or welcome back to the channel. If you're new, I go by Re. So welcome, welcome, welcome. And if you're a returning subscriber, you know I don't take your love and support lightly. So thank you for always being here. Today, I am jumping into some frequently asked questions um, pertaining to how I take my natural hair from this to this. So let's go ahead and get started. I have questions from Instagram. Y'all, I'm on TikTok, okay? Mama is trying to TikTok with the teeny boppers. I'm on TikTok, uh, Instagram, and I took some questions from YouTube Shorts, I believe. So I'm gonna answer um, some of the most frequently asked questions. Some of you guys DM some questions. So we're gonna hit them all in today's video. And if I don't get around to your question, I will do another hair care related video as I plan on giving tips on how to grow your hair, um, grow your natural hair in particular. So if I don't get around to your question in this one, you might want to shoot me another DM or leave it in this video and I will definitely address it in the upcoming video. So let's go ahead and get started. What steps do you take for wash day and what are your favorite deep conditioners? Also, for your girls, do you guys have the same hair regimen? I apply three products to my hair while my hair is wet or damp straight out of the shower. Those products are a leave-in conditioner. That's the first product. Next is an anti-frizz serum because I am natural and humidity is the devil when you're natural. So you want to combat that as best as possible. And then last but not least is my heat protectant. Okay. My favorite deep conditioners are, well, the only deep conditioners that I've really used are in the Shea Moisture line. I don't have any like really favorite favorites. Um, I don't think I have a real favorite deep conditioner. Um, I will flash up on the screen which deep conditioner I do use. However, I don't do a traditional deep condition like how when you're in the salon, they will pull you, you know, out and you'll put the conditioner in, you'll put the shower cap on and you'll sit for like 30 minutes to an hour while they do two more heads of hair. I don't do the traditional deep conditioning here at home. I actually don't really deep condition at all. If you're thinking about deep conditioning being a situation where you're sitting with conditioner in your head for a set amount of time. I don't do that. When I'm in the shower, I wash my hair. And then after I wash my hair, which I operate in four sections. If you guys have been here for a while, you know I don't do anything with my hair unless it is in four sections. So I take one section down, I wash it, I pin it up. I take another section, I wash it, I pin it up. And I move forward all the way around my head. Once it's all completely washed, I will then apply my deep condition. And it's, it's really a conditioner that I put in to really just kind of go through and detangle my hair. As soon as I'm done detangling it, I rinse it out. I don't do really a, a serious deep condition. For the sake of today's video, I did pop out of the shower though, and I did apply my deep conditioner in so that I could just show you guys how I always detangle from the ends of my hair up to the crown. And then I did pop my shower cap on just this time around and I did a little work on my laptop because I was feeling like, let me pamper myself and do something extra special with my hair. So I did a deep condition this um, last go around, but I don't normally deep condition my hair. However, everyone's hair is different. Everyone's technique and routine is different. So do what you feel is best for your hair. I am not a professional hairstylist. Some of the things I do, your hairstylist would probably cringe, cringe, cringe at. Is the hair regimen the same for me and the girls? Absolutely, we do the same exact steps. They are modeling exactly what I do with my hair. Um, our youngest daughter, who's 10, I do all of her hair washing and blow drying and flat ironing. Our oldest daughter, who is 15, has mastered it. She's doing everything on her own and mama is so relieved and happy. I did press her hair this last go round for wash day because she wanted it like absolutely bone straight and she wanted me to cut her hair. So I did straighten 
and um, cut her hair this last go round, and she was really, really happy with the results. So, but normally she does do her own hair. Somebody wanted to know, how do you go about applying the products and how much of each product do you use? That's a really good question because sometimes, you know, we can go too heavy on the product or we can not do enough. So let's talk about the leave-in conditioner. In terms of how much product do I use for my hair, texture, type, and thickness, I do about 10 pumps of my um, leave-in conditioner. When I apply that leave-in conditioner, I work from the ends of my hair up to the crown because the ends of your hair, that's the part of your hair that is the most damaged. That's the part of the hair that has been there for the longest. It is the most tattered and torn. So you want to work your product in really, really well, concentrating on the ends and then work that product up for one section of my head. Okay. And then I apply about five pumps of my anti-frizz serum. And that is each section per section, five pumps per section. And I work my way all the way around my head. The anti-frizz serum, you want to put that on at the crown of your head or the root and work your way down because the understanding is your new growth sprouts from your root, right? Sprouts from your head, your crown, your temple. And the new growth is the part of your hair that is not heat trained at all, right? So it is going to be more susceptible to frizz from the humidity in the air. So I put the anti-frizz serum in at the root, but I do work it on down the rest of the strands so that all of my hair is getting some anti-frizz serum, but the root is going to get the most. And then for my heat protectant, I go through and I section each little area that I'm blow drying and I just, I don't saturate it, but I spray it pretty generously with the heat protectant and then I blow dry. Those are the products that I apply once I've applied all of those products to wet or damp hair. I'll say it again. I'm going to say this a million times until you are sick of hearing me say it. You want to apply all of these products to damp or wet hair use your blow dryer to seal the deal. All right, so the next question is, Re, how do you get your hair to be so shiny? What oils do you apply after you blow dry? Okay, really good question. After you're done blow drying, no more products. Don't reach for your pink lotion. Do people still use pink lotion? Do y'all remember pink lotion or am I just sharing my age? We was using pink lotion, honey, to get this shine. Y'all remember that in high school? You had that pink lotion and you had some in your backpack. Because if you get to school and your hair looking dingy, go in the bathroom and put that pink lotion on. Okay, maybe I'm showing my age. But you don't need your pink lotion. You don't need any additional oils. Now, to each its own, if you choose to add extra oil to your hair, that's on you. And that's fine. And it may be more suitable for people who have relaxers. For me in particular, because I am natural, going and applying any type of oil or, you know, hairspray or anything after the fact is going to cause my hair to revert back to being curly. So I don't, after it's dry, I don't bother it. Your hair daily produces its own natural oils. It's nothing wrong with putting oil in your hair. I just don't like to put oil in my hair because it weighs my hair down. How often do you wash your hair? I wash my hair every seven days, just about. I used There used to be a time when I could stretch my hair to almost three weeks, y'all, and I know that it's trifling, but it was what I did and it worked for me. And my hair looked really good for almost three weeks, but it's something about, I don't know, I guess growing a little bit more seasoned and getting older to where my scalp is very different now. I seem to have a lot more dryness and my scalp just can't go past about seven days. Um, it still maintains its shine and its bounce, but it just, my scalp is just, it has a lot of buildup after about seven days. It looks like dandruff. So every seven days I'm washing my hair and I hate it y'all. I absolutely hate it. All right. Next question. Can you show when you're actually pressing your hair? I think that may be where I'm having trouble. And I showed this on short form video on Instagram and I believe on TikTok, but um, I will definitely pop up a little bit here so that you can see how I'm going about straightening. I want to talk to more specifically about this technique. It is called the 
um, chase method. I love this particular method. It is where you use your comb and your flat iron. They work together as a team to get your hair straight. Someone was asking why the comb, Re? Why is the comb necessary? I believe the comb is necessary with the chase method because it evenly distributes the heat as you are pulling that flat iron down. The comb really kind of spaces out your hair evenly so you don't have any like clumps or like pockets where your, your hair is kind of like lump. You know, when you're straightening your hair just on its own without the comb, some hair may be on top of each other or it may be kind of knotted as you're going down. This is going to prevent all of that knotting and it is going to just evenly distribute that heat as you go down. I started the, the chase method when I first started pressing my hair. This will be my method always. It really does, in my opinion, help with getting your hair straightened. <music>
uh, follow me on like to know it, which is also known as LTK download it. It is a free download, a free app at no charge to you. It is where you can find all of your favorite creators content or products rather. It's like a library of all of your favorite creators, products, items they love, clothes, home items, whatever they are endorsing, sharing, we're putting it in LTK. So go to LTK, download the app, follow me at Restyles It. I'm at Restyles It on every platform that I'm on. So um, you can easily find me as you you know, kind of navigate throughout the, the world of the internet and social media, but restyles it, like to know it, find me there. And not only do you have the products there, but you have the direct link so that you can go and buy said products. And we receive a small commission, which we definitely appreciate. It's kind of like we're your personal shoppers. If you think about it, we are, um, gathering products, and when you buy those said products, it is no additional cost to you, but we do receive a small commission. So it is very helpful when you click on a creator's link and buy through their link. Um, it definitely helps us to pay the bills, keep the lights on, do what we continue to do and, um, and love doing. As far as the techniques, I'm sharing the techniques here. Chase method is the biggest game changing technique that I started doing long ago. And it's going to always be a technique that I use. Um, all right, let me see. Hello. What's best to use for shedding. Now I am not a hair professional. You guys know, I am just your average kitchen beautician by the way of the internet, spreading some hair love and inspiration. I'm going to try my best to answer this question, but don't hold me to it. This is just my opinion. Now there is a huge difference between hair shedding breakage and hair loss. In my opinion, um, hair loss is something that I'm not going to tap into because I have some hair loss and I feel like once those follicles are damaged, they're damaged. Hair loss is something that's kind of hard to come back from. I have some patches that are just gone. They've been gone forever and they just, they're not coming back. I don't think, um, hair breakage, and you can Google it. I may be wrong. I'm just kind of speaking off the top of my head. And I probably should have Googled this since I'm making a whole video on it, shouldn't I? But hair breakage, in my opinion, and I'm Googling it as I'm sharing, just to kind of confirm what I think I know. Hair breakage is where like the hair is literally like, it's not a complete strand of hair. Like hair shedding would be a whole strand of hair that has come out. Hair breakage is going to be like where the hair has snapped in two in pieces and you can see it. It's much shorter strands. I have both. I've had hair breakage and I've had hair shedding. Um, shedding is completely normal. I think we're supposed to shed up to like a hundred strands of hair a day. Um, ah, yes. The hair breakage is the strand that you can literally see where it has broken in half. It is not a complete strand of hair. Hair loss, let me see, what are they saying about hair loss? Yeah, hair loss is more of a something being damaged or something going on with the hair follicle to where, in my opinion, it's, it's probably not going to grow back and you would need to seek professional help for that. Hair shedding, again, completely normal. I think we're losing up to 100 strands of hair a day. Don't freak out about it. Grays can be wiry and resistant. I know mine are. How do you plan on managing your hair? Let me tell you what. I'm getting my little grays, okay? I While I was straightening my hair, I noticed, I noticed them coming in. Some of them are wiry and seem a little unruly. Some of them seem very much so tamed and easy to manage, so... That's going to be a whole nother journey that you can just stick around and see and follow me as I go down that path. I, ha I know nothing about gray hair. I do have this idea that I do not want to dye my hair just because I'm so concerned about all of the toxins in dyes. I was at Target, y'all, and I was scanning the dyes. I have not found one hair dye that is not toxic. If you know of a hair dye that's not toxic, let me know. Holler at me in the comments down below. Meet me in the comments down below and let me know. 
but I don't know of any hair dyes on the market that are not toxic. I think I've heard of henna being something that is um, more natural, but I don't think you can do henna in black, which my hair has always been black. I've never ever dyed my hair. I'll figure out what to do with the wiry grays when we get there. But for right now, um, I've got a few grays trinkling in here and there. Um, and I, I mentioned in a previous video that I'm hoping to rock a beautiful head of gray hair. Like I wanna be my husband's silver fox, okay? <laughs> All right, everyone, that is it for today's video. As always, make your day beautiful. The choice is yours, and I'll see you guys in the next one.